I said it as late as I thought. That's okay. Welcome back to Let's Clone. My name would be Stephen French, and this is part four. I had to fucking use my cheat sheet already just to figure that out. Gonna be a good one. Really, we're only gonna be adding one script that will play in our controller event, and we're gonna update one other small thing, and then we'll be good to go. The end result of this part should have us playing an actual game of Tetris. We're going to save the scores and the polish for the next and final part. If it should be the final part, but we will have a playable game that we can easily lose some of our, our life. Just kind of having fun with. Get into it. Okay, so that thing that we need to add is going to happen in our controller event. Come down to our step, what happens every frame. And here, right between our... I guess key press for speeding up the blocks and for spawning a new shape, although I don't think it actually needs to go here. I think it can go anywhere in this file, but we're going to put it here regardless. We're going to... What did I use as... I don't think I commented it well. I don't comment very well when I do my own code. But we're going to create a script called check rows. Uh, well, here, we'll, we'll say... We'll, we'll, we'll do it like this. We'll say look for completed rows. Put rows in capitals because I can. So we're going to check rows. Come on, create a new script. Right there. One of those three there. All right, and we're going to check for rows. But what we want to do is we want to loop through our grid from bottom to top and from left to right. So we're going to just kind of make that the comment because that's what's going on. Uh, loop through grid, bot, oh, but, heh, bot to top, left to right. We got it. So we're going to go typical for loop, how we've been doing it. Temporary variable for our yy is equal to, and we're going to start at 19, we are. Starting at 19, starting at the top, gonna work our, nope, starting at the bottom, gonna work our way up, bottom to top, god, that, that got tricky real quick for me. YY is greater than or equal to zero. I'm not gonna need the reference for everything in here, but I'm gonna need it quite a bit. Okay, so we're looping from bottom to top, and then we're gonna loop from left to right. This from four, I can't talk and type at the same time, it's never gonna work. X, X is equal to zero, X, X is less than 10, x, x plus plus. So we have x going positive each, I guess, loop, y going negative. So we're, it's the only only difference from like, the typical loop and how we've typically been sorting through this. I... Cool, okay. Now in our first pass, or every time that we are checking a new row, we're gonna set a variable and we're gonna actually assume that that row is completed. This is a really common way to to use a boolean and kind of have it work for us. I'm, I'm saying this terribly, I'm sorry. But I'm gonna call temporary variable of full is equal to true. So again, we are assuming that we're, we're full. And uh, should I, no, nah, I guess I don't need to, I was gonna say there that we're looping from left to right, but that's already covered in the original comment. All right, so now going through our X, going from, from left to right, if we hit a single element that doesn't have a block, we can change this Boolean to false, and then we know that that entire row was a dud. So we can say if grid, again using that accessor, uh, X, X, Y, Y is equal to zero, or we can do not equal to one, whichever way you want to do, then we can do full is equal to false. Now, if we finish this loop, if we're able to loop however, whatever height we're at, but we can finish all the way through and underscore full is still equal to true, that means that every cell that we hit is occupied by a block. So we know that there is something we need to do. So I call that uh, take action. If, come on, Steven. If row is full. Now we need to do a couple things when we're here. Um, first, to, to know that we should be doing something, we're gonna put this inside of an if full loop because that kind of, it, it does what our comment is saying we need to do. 
but we do need to loop through that row again because we're going to need to delete everything in it and then we're going to need to pull everything that's above it down one. So if this is full, the first thing we're going to do is set grid space to zero uh, and delete blocks. We'll, we'll just move through it this way. Again, if you, always, if you ever have any questions, please ask me all of them and I'll try my best to find a new way to explain it. So we can reuse this variable xx. Uh, we've lost access to it because it's inside of this for loop, but normally if you're using one, you don't need it somewhere else just in case the data gets all screwed up, but we've already gone through this and we don't need this variable anymore. So we're gonna just reuse that name, something we're not gonna do later in a second, but we're going to have it equal zero. xs is less than 10, xx plus plus. Just wanna make sure I'm doing that the way that I want to. Good. Now, the first thing we got to do is we got to delete or set the grid space to zero. So grid at accessor xx y is equal to zero. We now ain't got no shit there. Right, variable, I'm just going to call this one an instance. You can call it a block, anything that you want. It's equal to instance place. Oh, that should be an underscore. Wow, this is going to take forever if I can't type. And this gets a little bit tricky. We have xx times cell size plus grid offset. Oops. Oh, god damn it. All right, now this is, again, if you're using an x offset, y offset, if your grid is set up in a different way than mine will be, then hopefully you got all that sorted out because I, I don't know how to explain it in a good way at all. But same thing for y, cell size plus grid offset. I'm going to be really, really bad in this whole part with remembering where the hell I put everything and what how, how I'm doing it. Object blocks. All right, so we've created an instance of, let me just make this a little bit longer so I don't have to deal with not being able to see anything. Um, Right here, we can assume since that was a one, we can assume that there's going to be a block there. Normally, I would still do a if instance is not equal no one, but I, I think it's it, I'm comfortable enough assuming it in this case uh, with instance instance destroy. So that is just going to we've taken the grid space, we've set that to zero. There was obviously a block in front of it, or this will be the block. We've taken that, we've deleted it. Now that whole row, once we run through this loop, is completely empty. So the next step is going to be shuffle. We've got to now pull anything that could have been above it, drop it back down. And this is where we're going to have a really simple mistake for you to make, because we're going to do another nested loop inside of here where we are using both our, our Y's and our X's. So I'm going to start those with an underscore so we can kind of differentiate them. Uh, feel free to use different variables here if you want to make them capital or if you want to actually label them something appropriate. So it's not as confusing, but a lot of people will definitely make mistakes here because it's it, it, it's too easy. So variable, I'm gonna use underscore yy because I'm gonna make it confusing myself. We're gonna set that to yy. We're gonna set it to the current row that we're on, or rather I think, yeah, the current row that we're on. It makes up my rows and columns all the time. It's worse than my lefts and rights. For as long as, again, underscore yy is, oh, I fucking lost it, greater than zero underscore yy because god damn i'm gonna make that mistake minus minus now we need to loop uh left to right across our x so for variable I mean the same thing underscore xx we're gonna do it the normal way is equal to zero underscore xx is greater oh i'm sorry less than 10 and underscore xx doing my best to keep that specific All right, so we're gonna loop Left to right, go in again up uh, all the way to the top of the board. Where's my spot? All right, so we need to check if the grid space above where we're at is a one. So if grid accessor uh, underscore xx underscore yy minus one. So we're checking the grid space up one. If that is equal to one, meaning that we have a square up in that situation. Now we need to drop the grid value. And I, I don't mean it 
I don't mean drop as in subtract and make zero. I need to actually, like, we want to move it down one cell. So we're going to drop the grid value, and we're going to do that Good, exactly the way that I thought. We're going to have a grid oops, accessor underscore xx underscore y. Hey, don't scratch that, dude. That's my shit. We're going to set this to 1, and now we need to erase the one that was above it. So I hear you. Exclamation underscore xx underscore. I'm just going to underscore yy minus 1. Wow, fucking all this up. Why did I? Why are there two there? Is equal to zero. Cool. So we've dropped the grid value. Now get rid of that. Uh, we need to drop the block. So the same thing. We pulled down the one down to our space. We need to pull down the block that might be there. So we're going to do this with variable block is equal to instance place at underscore xx times cell size or cello size uh, this should be plus grid offset but we need to make sure that we get the one unit above so we need the underscore yy minus one times cell size plus grid offset. Hey, let me actually do the thing that time. Object blocks. So we are making an instance of the block, or rather we are uh, getting an instance to, uh, yeah, we're creating a variable that is the instance that is above that space. So it's not the cell that we're on, it is the, let's point to the screen, it is right above that cell with the cell minus one. Did I do my check here? All right, I did, I did. This one, I don't know why I had less confidence in this one. I probably should do this. It'd be better practice to do it on both, but I didn't, so whatever. If block does not equal no one. That is just Game Maker's way of simply allowing us to check that this pulled true and that we're actually like holding onto an object and we, we're not, we didn't fuck up anywhere. But we'll, we'll check, we're not gonna check the other one. So then we just need to move it down one space, which is pretty easy because this dot y plus equals cell size. That's, we've already got a, a variable for that. Two more things that I want to do. And they're actually pretty small because this game doesn't end. If we play like the blocks get to the top, it just keeps going. So the first thing I want to do is I want to fix that. And we actually do that. I don't like that it's here, but it kind of makes sense for it to, to happen here for me. Um, we're going to say end game condition. Uh, this is being run inside of our controller when we spawn a block. Now, what I could find while playing a, a regular Tetris game or just a Tetris version that I found on a browser, uh, kind of if the, the spawn location is filled by another piece and a new piece spawns on top of it, then that's where the game tends to break. Or rather, that's where you end up losing your game. Excuse me, because you can't go above the top, uh, almost like in chess, you can't actually capture the king. Because um, by the time you get there, you wouldn't be able to, the next piece would spawn, you would you can't put it off the screen above it. So we're just going to check in this position if place meeting at, again, the XY, it's the XY of the controller, but it's in its starting position. Um, checking if we are colliding with any object borders, which will collide with a border object or the block object, the individual static block. And for right now, we're just going to do game restart. So if you do fuck that up, it just goes to the end. The last thing that I want to do is also in our create event, or I mean, sorry, our controller event, but in the create event of it. Uh, I have this in a different location on mine, but that's because there's another object we're going to be creating the next part, and I want to implement it now. We're just going to randomize the game. Uh, game Maker will always start off with the same, uh, I guess, seed. Uh, so all randomization will follow the same pattern unless you randomize, unless you give it a new seed to start off. Now it is unpredictable. In other words, every time you play, you're actually going to be getting the same sequence of pieces, and that doesn't make it very fun. That's just a memorization game. So we've randomized the game, and we've given ourselves a losing condition. Let's see what that looks like. So it did start off with, I think, like an S and then a Z. Now it'll be giving us whatever fucking pieces it wants. We're just going to move our way up. We're going to let it go. It hits, next piece spawns, game over right away. Oh, start with him, start with him. 
We're going for another. If it takes me too long, I'll fucking clip ahead. I want to put you there. 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 Right, we got everything almost. Uh, we're going to actually need to wait until we get two blue pieces to, to make this convenient. Give them to me. Come on, give them to me. I need two of them. Just give me fucking one of them first, and then I'll take the other one. You son of a bitch. Come on. You're done. Make it. Okay, we got one of them. Uh, I almost goofed that. Just dropping too quick. Give, just give me the other one, dude. I, I just need one more. I've gotten three this whole attempt. Come on. <laughs> Make this a little bit easier for me, guy. And okay. Okay, so let's look this out. It should go purple, purple, green, pur purple, pink, purple, purple. Easy enough. Just one under this green L. Let's see what happens. Purple, purple, green, purple, purple, pink, purple, purple. Good. We're not missing any rows. We can go through, and this this actually happens to me a lot. After making this game or while making this game, I wasted so much time because I found out that I'm kind of decent at well, actually right over here at Tetris. And I, you just start playing it like too damn much. So expect that uh, around this time, <laughs> like right around the end of this video, you might just play this game too much because it's, it's fun as fuck. Uh, you've been warned. I see, I really, right now, I just want a green piece so I can fill in that little spot on the bottom because it, it just looks like it's begging for it. Wow, this isn't what I want though. Um, no, I want, I want it to be the green piece. Now that I've, I've said it, it's like to my head give me the green piece this mm, we'll do that that's weird I'm like there it is I just wanted that to happen because it was satisfying this Tetris <laughs> I'm gonna let this go over there and break we're gonna go big face big face oh great again I screwed up awesome so thank you so much for watching around uh, watching along being here if you made it this far as you can see, we've, we've made some progress, finally some actual fun progress. We've got a Tetris game. It's going to get in the next part some points and some polish, and we're going to be all done. Uh, only disclaimer I have on that is that I couldn't find any like free license um, audio or sound effects that I can use for like the rotations or the block drop or the point chimes. I found one asset file, but they're all in .ogg files, and I, I guess I was too lazy to find a converter to put those into something that GameMaker will accept. I did find the Tetris music, so we're going to implement that and that'll be enough, at least theoretically, for you to know how to handle music or how to handle sound effects, but I will make sure that in the next tutorial I will include some more polish on the audio side. But that is all for now. That is part four of Tetris. We got a game. Once again, thank you so much, and uh, yeah, the next part should be out in hopefully just a day or two. I, I, Definitely going to finish up by this weekend, and I want to start making the next game, so you can catch me over on Twitch for whatever game I decide to make doing the coding in real time there. Enjoy your night, or your day, whenever you watch this. Fuck off. <laughs> I don't know how to sign out of this thing, but peace. Thank you.